Hello there. Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and liking. Most of all, thank you for playing my music. I really, really appreciate it. The topic of this week's video, myth and truth regarding 432 hertz tuning. When you start researching uh, this topic for 32 hertz tuning, sound healing and so on, you come across a lot of claims. Many of them are true, as in they can be actually tried and tested and proven to be true. Many of them are untrue. They are just claims being made. When you start doing the math or checking with the scriptures or whatever it may be, the claims just simply fall apart. There is no uh, substance to them. So today I'm going to take a look at uh, two very popular and uh, persistent myths regarding 432 hertz tuning and sound healing. The first one we're going to look at is the claim that all ancient instruments were tuned to 432 hertz. This is being claimed again and again in a lot of different forums online and many people seem to just take it as fact without bothering to actually check in and look into the details uh, of it and uh, see if it uh, holds water. It's a pretty heavy claim prior to the 1950s. All instruments were tuned to 432 hertz. How can it be true? And we know for a fact that it wasn't true. There are many, many uh, reference pitches being used that we know about in recorded history and in unrecorded history. We simply don't know. We have some ancient instruments that we have excavated and we have even made the replicas of some that people have played and they are in all different kinds of pitches and frequencies and tunings. The tuning fork was invented in 1711 and we have many forks still uh, intact today and the A in these forks range from 409 hertz to 455 hertz just to name a couple of examples. So in modern classical music to say that all instruments were tuned to 432 before the standard of 440, simply not true. As far as really ancient instruments go, it's uh, hard to tell. There are many examples or there are a few examples of replicas of ancient instruments being played. I've heard a few myself. For example, I've heard uh, um, a Celtic uh, horn that is said to be about Bronze Age, uh, two, two and a half, three thousand years old. And its root pitch was actually a 108 uh, hertz. So in this case, it was true. It was tuned to 432 tuning. The oldest instrument I probably heard was a replica of a bone flute that was found in Europe and is said to be uh, over 30,000 years old. This person made a replica of it and he played it. And it sounded awesome, of course, but it definitely was not 432 hertz tuning. The most interesting thing I've personally heard in this regard is a recording of what is supposed to be very, very old uh, Tibetan singing bowls. And these bowls had frequencies of 108 hertz, 144 hertz, 192 hertz, 256 hertz, 360 hertz, 612 hertz, and 912 hertz which is fantastic. It's all frequencies that we know and like. They're all part of the series of what I call magic frequencies or sacred frequencies. On the other hand, I have no way of proving that these uh, bowls were actually ancient. I don't know. It was a modern recording, obviously, but the bowls were said to be several hundred years old. I choose to believe it. I don't see why anybody would just make something like that up. Or, well, to make money, get attention. I get it, but... Uh, I gotta follow my gut feeling and, and um, I believe it to be true. They were actually old bowls. Also, I have heard several other recordings of what is supposedly ancient uh, Tibetan bowls and not all of them are in the frequency range that we're looking for. In fact, they are all over the place. Many, many different frequencies. So in the case of this uh, one particular recording that I talked about, it is true that uh, Tibetan bowls were tuned to 432, were using the sacred frequencies. But to say that Tibetan singing bowls are tuned to 432 is simply not true. It's more complicated than that. It's being said many times that uh, ancient Egyptian instruments and ancient uh, Sumerian instruments were all tuned to 432. They may have been. We uh, have no instruments uh, intact from that era and that uh, area as far as I know. A lot of them were string instruments and obviously the strings have rotted away. They were made from sinew and things like that. Uh, instruments were made from wood or clay or 
bone in most cases. Most of it has also rotted away. We have found things that are close to intact, but nothing that can actually be played. There have been made uh, replicas, but of course we don't know how they were tuned. In some cases, you may take measurement of a certain instrument and find its uh, inherent frequency, since all objects have an inherent frequency. And we may have figured out that this inherent frequency was 432 hertz or some other magic or sacred frequency. I have seen no evidence of it, but it's a possibility, of course. Also, if a miracle should happen and we should uh, be able to excavate an ancient Egyptian harp that is fully intact and with the strings intact also, it is extremely unlikely that it would actually be in tune. I mean, I leave my my guitar or my harp here for a few, just for a few days without playing it and it's out of tune. I have to retune it before I play it. So that simply wouldn't happen. So it's possible that they tune to 432 hertz, but again, to just make the simple claim that ancient Egyptians or uh, Sumerian instruments were tuned to 432 hertz is, it, it can't be said to be 100% true. We have to say that it's possible but we simply do not know. Another very popular and persistent myth about 432 hertz tuning is that the standard of 440 hertz uh, were decided by the Nazis. Now, it is true that uh, an international conference was held in the 1930s in London uh, with the aim of agreeing on a standard international uh, pitch. It, it is also true that members of the Nazi party were present and that they voted for the 440 pitch but again to say that they were behind it and that's that it's that simple it's simply not true once again we just don't know we have very little information and people in new age community or modern spiritual community or whatever they love a good conspiracy theory and anything involving nazis and brain washing and whatnot is very very popular of course so this keeps getting repeated there is no hard evidence of it in existence that I know of. I have looked. There may be things that I have overlooked or not being able to uh, not been able to find, of course. As always, I don't know. What I present to you here is the results of my uh, research, what I have come to so far. I keep doing research. I keep discovering new things. And uh, if I should realize that I've made an error of some sort, I will correct it. I have no uh, um, interest in being right. I'm simply interested in sharing this information as truthfully and as, as um, level-headed as possible and not be carried away by wild theories because there are too many of them out there and we don't need them. What we need is truth. If we are going to, to convince the world to, to retune their instruments and that the 440 hertz equal tempered music that we listen to today really isn't good for us, then we need to stick with the truth. We need to not be too carried away with, with wild claims that can be easily debunked because we are simply doing ourselves a, a, a great disservice. So these were just a couple of myths. More is to come. Uh, I'll talk about everything I know on this channel uh, eventually. I'm making one video a week. So if you're interested in seeing more, you can subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Please click like on the video so more people can see it. You may also comment, you may also ask questions. I will, I'll do a Q&A pretty soon, I think, because there are many good questions uh, at, out there that I've been asked and I'm sure uh, more people want to get the answers to them. If you like the work I do on this channel, if you appreciate the time I put into it, there are many ways in which you can help me out. I have a Patreon page. I have lots of music up on Spotify, on iTunes, on Amazon Music, Google Music, Deezer, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, etc. You may stream it or... Uh...